in the name of, the, of Jesus Christ, the new image of God. Amen. This week, we continue with our sermon series from the first three chapters of the Bible from Genesis, in which we see the foundations of the faith and really the foundation of the rest of the Bible. Last week, we discovered the mystery of the Trinity and that we are always able to, to continue coming to know him and what he's done for us through the scriptures. Today we return to that creation and to those verses that at the end of his creation in which we see the, the only part of his creation that was made in his image, in the image of God. And we see God creating humans, and this is how it went. God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that crawls on the earth. God created the man in his own, own image, in the image of God. He created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So from these verses, there are a few things, there are a few important parts to make note of. First, we can see that there's something different that was about to happen. God had created all of the animals, all of the rest of creation, but God pauses for a moment to declare the next step of his plan. And it was his plan to create someone in his image and likeness to create someone who would be his representative in his creation. Not someone that was God, but someone who would think like God, someone who would act like God, someone who would do the things that God would do, who would say the things that God would say. What God wanted, this image of God, would want just the same. And what God would desire, this image of God would desire just the same. And so, he created his image and likeness in human beings. In those first humans, Adam and Eve. Adam had the image of God, and so did Eve. They both did. And they were special. And you can see many reasons for which they were special. First, you can say, well, they had this intelligence and reason that was without comparison with the rest of the animals. God also gave them another thing to separate them from the rest of creation, especially the animals, and that was their soul, right? But more than that, it was his image that made them so special. They had this perfect harmony with their creator, a, a perfection in their wisdom, in their thoughts, in their actions, in everything they did, everything that they stood for. And it's hard to imagine what it was like, right? To think and to act without feeling fault, without feeling guilt, to, to, to do things and to live your life without shame that, that we face every day because of our sinful mind and the sinful lives we lead. We lead. I can't imagine the, the meaning for them of being these leaders and these stewards of God's new creation and the pride that, would have, that they would have had when they would have done something perfectly that God asked them, a work of God in this perfect way and then they would have gotten this response, well done, good and faithful servant. You've done exactly what I wanted. It's hard to imagine what that would have been like to be the exact image of God, the very image of who God is, his representatives on earth that reflected him perfectly. Well, and it's true, they had it. They had this image of God. They had this perfection for a moment at the beginning until everything changed. You know what happened? They ate that only fruit that was prohibited from them. They disobeyed God. They, they went the other way. They took another path and they lost this harmony that they had with God. Their perfection was lost. Their relationship with God that was perfect was broken. 
And so they no longer had that, that image, that, that image of God that was perfect. It was this source of worth for them. It was the main source of worth that they had, and they lost it. Look, what, look how it talks about this in, in chapter 5 of Genesis. This is what it says. It says, after all this happened, it says, This is the account about the development of Adam's family. In the day that God created man, he made them in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them. And on the day they were created, he named them mankind. Then Adam lived 130 years and he became the father of a son in his own likeness, according to his own image. And he named him Seth. So at the beginning, Adam was God's image on earth. He was the part of the that of creation that represented God the most. And so at the beginning, when when someone would have observed Adam's perfection, they would have said, that seems like God. It's just like God, right? That reminds me of God. But after that first sin, when someone would have observed Adam or Eve or, or Seth or any of the other descendants, the rest of humanity, they wouldn't have said, that reminds me of God. They would have said, that reminds me of man, of Adam, of someone sinful, someone fallen, someone lost. Because they no longer had that perfect image of God. They didn't have his perfection. They didn't have his image. Think about, it's hard to imagine this sadness that Adam would have had having experienced that, that image of God but then having lost it, that, that source of worth that he had that, that was totally gone, that was lost, and, and now we face the same results of all that. Now we're born in the same situation. We're born without his image, without this perfection that, that would make us worthy in God's eyes, right? His image was lost for us as well. until Jesus, until he sent Jesus, until that point when God gave us another source of worth that is greater and even more important, not just to Adam, but for the rest of humanity as well. Our, our source of worth no longer is that God created us in his image, but that God saved us. He gave us an infinite worth because he gave his son for us. That was a sacrifice that was infinite. That was the sacrifice of God. That's what our gospel says for today, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It's in his son that he is also restoring us, restoring us to this image of God once again. By faith, we, the, by the faith that we have, there is fruit, but not fruit from a tree, but the fruit that comes from faith, the fruit of faith it, that makes us seem more and more like God so that more and more people will look at us and think, wow, that seems like God. That must be how God is. We have seen the love of God and we have experienced it and we have benefited from it. And that's the same love that we now show to the rest of the world. So that when others observe us, they don't see, they seem like their earthly father. No, they seem like their heavenly father because that's the image that we now have, that he is creating in us more and more through faith in his son, who is his perfect image of his God and Father. May God keep on using us to show his image in the world so that more and more can see who God is and the way he is. Amen.
Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you did not eliminate your creation when they lost your image. In your grace, you decided to restore us so that we have your image once again. Keep on creating in us a faith that is living and active in our world so that more and more others can see this image, this, this perfection, this love that you have for them through our lives as reflections that are faithful to you. Take care of your people. Keep us safe in your hands, in our bodies and in our souls. Up until that last day when your son will return to bring us with him to heaven, when we once again will have that image that will be perfect and complete, the image of God in us, through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with the Holy Spirit and with you, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all.